Hey guys, Alex Costa here. We get about 100 customer emails a week asking for help. So we put together a series of educational videos to help you. Just a lot of fucking emails. And they're stupid. Hope you enjoy. And I'm not trying to insult you. I still love you. We still love you. So that's why we're making these videos to help you or your friends actually get the education they need. All right, so we're talking about our Anvil Ucon line. Anvil is a brand of a &R Design. Uh, our flagship products with Anvil were magazine wells, magazine base plates, and we came out with the original Anvil Ucon RMR mount. Um, the Anvil Ucon was developed for a tier one unit they needed a optic mount that could serve other purposes. And the other purposes that we built into the system were iron sights. In most cases, a lot of tier one units, they have a iron sight requirement for a weapon system when they purchase a weapon system. And the first thing a lot of these guys are doing is they're tearing their iron sights off their guns to um, offer more rail space on the firearm. So it's not necessarily a necessity. But these are mostly tier one units. These guys are doing uh, highly specialized operations. They're not your general Marine in the field with hand-me-down guns that are beat to shit, falling apart. Uh, they get to kind of pick and choose how they want to do their setups. So we came out with an optic mount that actually does serve a secondary purpose to optic mounting. Uh, we have a AR-15 adjustable elevation front sight post here. This is just a square peg. This is a, tr a universal system. You can put any sight post you want uh, on this one sitting here on the table. I have a bladed fiber front. So you can pick and choose. You can add your night sight versions, whatever you want. Uh, they have a pistol inspired rear sight. Now everyone, when they first see one of these, they say, Oh my God, sight radius. That sight radius is so small. What are you gonna hit with that? <laughs> well, the funny thing about this system is the sight radius is really close. But what happens when your sight radius is this close is it creates a single focal plane witness. <laughs> Meaning your pistol rear sights are in focus. Your front sight post is in focus because they are farther away from the body. So we always suggest when you're running these systems, run them more forward on the rail system. The closer you bring the, uh, the optic mount system to the end user, you're gonna get more rear iron sight blurring. The whole point of having them, the, the rear pistol sight and the front iron sight in focus together is it acts like a backup red dot. Well, your, your red dot is on a single plane. So wherever that dot is, that's where the round's going. Uh, same idea here is when they are closer together, it creates that single plane and you get uh, faster sight acquisition and you have less variance for sight radius issues. Uh, one company that did do it pretty well on a pistol system was Caracal. They put um, the rear sight on a pistol in front of the ejection port. Then you had both sights that were in the same focal plane. So people that have stigmatisms and have issues picking up rear sights when they're blurred out could see them in a single focal plane and you get quick sight acquisition and you get rounds down range faster. The same works for this. If your dot isn't turned on and it's a service, it's a service gun or a patrol rifle that you leave in your vehicle or your, your battery dies, you have iron sights built into the system that you can use. And these aren't for reaching out to 500 yards and, and stuffing steel targets with your, your 16 inch carbine. These are an emergency backup. There's a reason why iron sights are backup. They're not for you to go reach out and touch a dude at 500 yards. If your dot's down or your battery has died or something has happened, they are an emergency backup. Depending on your platform that you are shooting, you can probably reach out and bang steel at 50 yards. Uh, our original one it was an RMR mount. It's a lower mount. Uh, I have six inch groups with a 300 blackout rat rattler at 50 yards. So they work. They work well and they get the job done when your primary optic 
fails. And that is the whole purpose of them. They aren't there as a lower thirds absolute backup. They are specific for emergency use only. So they fulfill a requirement while still achieving what you need it to do when you need it. That is simply it. And it works well. There's plenty of other companies that use similar uh, short sight radius front and rear sights on other products. Uh, we decided to do them on rifle optics, red dots. So our flagship product was for the RMR specifically. It is a lower mount. It is meant to be used on PDWs, monolithic rails, AKs, things that you no longer have the ability to have backup iron sights on when you add an optic to, or you want something very low pro to the gun and you're maximizing your rail space for other options. We did it for the Rattler because the unit that was running the Rattler didn't want anything else on the rail to snag because it was used for a concealed carry bag gun, bag PDW. We could say the same about this CZ Scorpion Micro here. It's a low vis bag gun. When you don't have iron sights on the front and rear of the, on the monolithic upper, you have nothing else to snag there. Uh, coincidentally enough, the front sight post almost acts like a deflector to your, to your lens. So if you go to bash, if, you know, if this bashes off something, it, it's protecting the lens of your, of your optic, as well as it kind of acts like a, a weedless hook when you're fishing. This is not gonna get snagged on much because clothing and other things just kind of come across it and then they just go right over, right over the optic. So it, it does coincidentally enough have purpose being in front of the lens like that. Uh, we are coming out with a adjustable windage rear on a few of our optic style lines. Expect that probably end of the year, uh, just with availability of materials and production. Uh, this is our new style T1, T2. It actually has these little individual feet here. These are to lock into your Picatinny rail. Um, our older style ones and our um, micro red dots have a single bodied clamp on the side. Here is the newer body. This one is for the Delta Point Pro. You'll see we did cut out as much meat as possible to keep these super lightweight. Um, our newer style ones, which is everything that we're currently selling, we have phased out all of our Gen 1s, but they do incorporate a Picatinny uh, recoil lug. So all of them have a recoil lug as well as your Picatinny mount there. This is the T1. It's got a little recoil lug built into the bottom of the frame of the optic mount. And then this would be our Gen 1. This was an original Gen 1 Ukon. It had a wider sight radius in the back. Uh, we since tightened that up significantly. But this is, this is why we developed the system and it, it works well. People are happy with it, we're happy with it, and, and it fits certain requirements and capabilities as well as maximizing your rail space. Uh, in this case, for zeroing it, my best suggestion for zeroing it or getting it close to zero and getting it started is zero your red dot first with a laser bore sighter. Get on paper, zero your red dot. Once that's done, put Apple on the post. You've got your rear, um, your rear sight here and your front peg. Just put that peg in line with the top of your rear sight and then, you know, move your elevation up or down till the dot of your red dot on your optic is either sitting on top of it or the blade, the top of the peg is splitting that dot in half. And that should get you very close, turn your dot off and verify that you're getting your hits. Yes, there's no windage to them. So it's solely based off that your rail is mechanically on center to your firearm in relationship to the barrel and that's in spec. And that when you mount your optic, the way we have our optic footprints is it should be there as long as it's in spec. So if the optic body is in spec, your Picatinny rail is in spec, and then this was designed to be on mechanical center to an in spec Picatinny rail 1913. So obviously some people might say, well, there might be some variance in uh, tolerancing or quality. Yes, this is true. Again, this is an emergency backup. If you are within 30 yards and you're running our T2 and your dots off and you run those iron sights, you are hitting what you are shooting at. You might not be stacking <laughs> bullets in the same hole, but you're hitting what you're shooting at. And that is the intended purpose of this system. 
So uh, we're excited because we're coming out with all of our Gen 2s. MROs are on our spectrum. Romeo 4T is coming out soon. What else do we have? Uh, Aimpoint Acro. We have one this style for the Acro. We decided to not make a lower mount for it, but to go with the 166 high. So on center from the rail to the center of the dot on our T2 right now is 166. We are coming out with a 193 height. So you guys can use your different magnifiers in relationship to it. People that are running big honk and PVS 14s that need a little bit more height, that'll be better. These run great when we're running tighter uh, dual tubes for night vision setups. Um, so we are coming out with variants. We have 45 offset Ucons coming out that will have a much smaller footprint, still have the built-in sight picture, but fit on an offset 45, tons of stuff. We actually have some really cool stuff I can't talk about that's coming out, but it's gonna be awesome.